Alrighty. Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. Hope everyone is doing well. Um, hope you all had a good weekend. Happy belated Father's Day to anybody who celebrated it this weekend. I'm actually going to be celebrating it next weekend, so that should be nice. Um, yeah, wish everybody well, and uh, happy, beautiful Monday today. So, last time, we worked on getting the typing mechanic to actually work, so a word would pass by, um, and then we'd be able to, uh, to type it out, and progressively, um, the, the word would change, the, each letter would change uh, to a certain color, and eventually, once you finish the word, um, then something happens. I think it changes color, right? It goes to golden or something, so let's just write TST. Cool, and we get this little particle effect, right? Um, we were working on the particle system before. Let's see if maybe we change the word to... Oh, I don't know. Uh, word was test. Let's see if... Um, miracle. Mirace. Miracle works. Um, okay, I just want to save that. Hmm. Cool. Let's test that out. So I don't think we tested much out other than the actual... Okay, so that's working. Um, right, this was also looking kind of... Uh, interesting. Alright, let's see if we get it wrong, what happens. Does it reset? So we do MI and then F. <clears throat> uh, it should reset, so why that isn't working, I'm not too sure. Let's double check. Um, I increased the size of the font a bit just to help anybody else, anyone anyone who, who's having trouble seeing, uh, see a bit better. Let's, nope, that's looping, text behavior. That's what we want, okay. Um, and this letters equals zero. Um, oh, but do we ever set? No, we don't. Right. Whoa, we never call reset, do we? Reset word, that's what we want. So instead of set next key, we actually want to call reset word, I think. It's just a small error. Do we ever call reset word? Let's see. Let's right click and go to find all references. And there are none. Okay. <clears throat> so that means that we're not calling it anywhere, which means that we have to call it where we should be calling it, which is right over here. Cool. So how did you guys celebrate Father's Day? Um, what did you guys do? Did you guys have anything to eat? That's usually what I ask. That's like the first question I ask is, oh, what did you have to eat? Was it anything special? That's also the main reason why I travel is just to find different foods to eat eat foods of different cultures. That's pretty much, it's it's my stomach that guides me around the world. Not so much my heart or my head. That's just a little fun fact. Now you know. The way to my heart is through my stomach. Alright, so let's try this out now. Now, if we're typing the word out and we get it wrong, then it should, perf should reset and then we should be able to then try it out again. Let's see here. Uh, yeah. Oh, interesting. So now, oh, hang on. Maybe we're setting something here. Um, uh, okay, reset word also has to set K equal to the first letter. Um, right, so we have to reset word and then we have to set next key. That's it. I think that's it. Let's just try that out. Cool. Alright, awesome. So, today what I want to work on is actually getting an enemy in here. I wanted to work on having some kind of, you know, something or other, other character running around in this world of ours, something other than our player. Our player is very cute, but he's getting lonely. So let's give him, I would say a friend, but 
not necessarily true in this case. Let's see. Sprites. Okay, we moved all the player sprites in there. So where were all of the... Was it in sprites? Oh, it was in sprites. Okay. So we have character, and then we have... What else do we have? Enemies. Oh, that's what we like to see. Enemies, and let's do maybe uh, PNGs. Um, okay, we have little triangles here. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. All right, cool. Yeah, and we have a weird like eye animation here, which I'm really digging. Hmm. I shouldn't say weird. I should say interesting. Just because it looks foreign doesn't mean it can't be useful somewhere. Let's see. Um, do we have any? Maybe okay, this is all the environment stuff. It's cool. <clears throat> yep, so we have trees. Maybe we can make a bush a bad guy. Give him some eyes or something. But for the time being, let's stick to big scary monstro over here. Yep. Okay, cool. Right, so this is a sprite. It's just the one. Cool. Um, I can't help but think maybe we can just, I don't know, create some blueberry versions of these guys instead of... Oh, interesting. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is... Well, let's do a couple of things. One, let's, let's bring this guy in here. Because we know that this one... It's definitely going to be helpful at some point. And let's set the sorting layer to mid-ground. Move it around. That's a bit large. Maybe bring his size a bit down. Oops. Uh, oh, hang on. Yeah, let's... All right, let's maybe... How's that compared to this? Mm, okay. Still a bit large. Maybe... Just playing around. Okay, that's looking all right. Nothing crazy. Um, maybe we'll put this one down here. Maybe we'll move the platform up just a tad. Mm -hmm. Again, we'll want this to be a bit, you know, on the ground so there's some depth to it. So maybe like there. Sure, we'll say that for now. Uh, we can also change the color. We can make it red. We can make it green. We can make it yellow. For the time being, let's just keep it at its original color. Cool. Um, and what I want to do is actually have the word um, be associated with this um, with this enemy here. So I'm actually gonna rename this enemy one. What I want to do is have this word prefab be a part of go back into prefab so be part of this enemy and have this enemy become a prefab itself. So now when I open up the prefab I should see this word here and where is that? That's a bit above it. So maybe let's move it in here. And eventually we're gonna add um some script that can dictate where to put this word. Uh, okay, so now that's an enemy, which is cool. Uh, we still have the radius, which is fine. Okay, so I don't think the enemy has a looping movement on it. All right, so that's we're gonna have to change that. Um. Oh, and do you know what? Yeah, we're gonna have to move that. Okay, here we go. We're gonna have to move the location where uh, this word is moving from. So we have to move the the reset position and the the original position for the words. So it was the platform. So now let's. I guess we have to make a new one then. So let's go into the markers and let's make a couple of other ones. Maybe. Um, or maybe we can just spawn an enemy every so often. Yeah, why don't we do that? It might actually be a bit easier. Um, 
Okay. I'm just going to make a new object here. I'm just going to call it Game Manager. We're just going to put some script on this for the time being that's going to spawn an enemy every once in a while. Um, and I want to actually add an enemy script as well. So I'm going to add enemy. I'll just call it enemy for now. Enemy, create and add. That's going to show up in my assets as well, and I want that to be in my scripts. Cool. And then I'll do the same thing for game manager. Let's add components. Game manager. New scripts. Create and add as you do. Yep. And it's funny when you when Unity sees that something ends in manager, they add like a, a different icon to it. That's something neat, I guess, that they do for you. Okay. So we have these two things. So the enemy is... Um, oh, right. We have to add that to the prefab. Apply to prefab. Um, <laughs> and in the game manager... The game manager, I think we're just going to need at some point. I'm losing my train of thought here. But it's, I don't think the location of this matters at all. Um, oh, the game manager is going to spawn enemies, right? And the enemies are going to have... They should have looping components, let's say. Or rather, no, they're, they're just going to have a, a movement that is necessarily looping. Um, we should probably have is looping. Uh, or we can just add... Yeah, why don't we just add it to the enemy script? So what did we do here in the platforms of platform sprites looping movement what are we doing here transform translate okay right in time to the speed cool um okay let's open up enemy script all right Cool, cool, cool. We don't need these, at least not yet. Um, all right, so this is the enemy, so we need a minimize field, private, float, speed, and then we'll just say dot trans, oops, dot translate, and then what does it take? It takes in the left times time times speed cool um. we'll say maybe if it's less than some position then we're just going to destroy it um, so let's say I don't know, less than negative two sure if dot position oops, dot x is less than or equal to negative two, destroy this game object. Okay, mm yep, it's pretty straightforward. And then the game manager, what that's going to do, uh, the script rather. It's going to take in a prefab, and it's going to spawn it at a certain position every few seconds. And it's going to give it a random word. So we'll have a uh, list of words, maybe. So, okay, we'll make, uh, for the time being, string... Oh, that's right, it's, it's lowercase here. String words equals... And then we had test we had miracle. We had frog. Blurry, we had acoustic, we had fun, and we're having fun. Uh, um, let's do develop, let's just do a few. Mm. Uh, kangaroo, I sure hope I'm spelling all these right. Uh, um, Lemur. 
and these should all be lowercase as well. Just want to make sure. All right, so that, I think that's enough. That should be good for right now. And this is probably going to say that we are not using this ever, and that's fine. We will be very soon. Um, so we're probably going to want to make another function here. What we want to do is give the enemy the ability to set the word of its child. So when the enemy spawns, we want this word to be some random word within this game manager's words. Uh, so, okay, so this is going to be public void set word and string word. And what this is going to do is it's going to get the text behavior of its child. Um, okay, so opponent, oops, hang on, get opponent and children, text behavior, dot, oh man, what was it? Um, I think we made the text private, yes, yeah, so, okay, and We'll make a public void set text as well in the text behavior string t and then what did we call it? We called it, we did call it text. So text equals t. We probably want to check if t groups t dot length is greater than or equal to oh to right, C sharp. You don't like Rather than equal to one, then set the text. Lovely. Mm, okay. So then, the enemy. What we want to do is call set text to the word. Oops. Um, okay. And then in here, what we want to do is. I'm trying to remember actually, is there a random... Oh, lovely. Float min, float max. Okay, cool. So we can just do that right off the bat. We don't have to import anything. That is mighty helpful. Let's do... Um, int and equals random dot range. And then what is this? Return a random float between the minimum and the maximum. What is this one? Random range. Oh, deprecated. Okay, random dot range. Let me give it a float. So let's do zero and words dot length. Um, and then we have to turn this into an integer. So let's do math dot. So math f dot. Yeah. Floor to int. Um, do you know what? Is this exclusive? I'm not sure. Hang on. And, uh, range. Uh, oh, it is inclusive. Okay, cool. So, okay, then we want to. Yeah. Uh, we want to create enemies game object enemy. And then what we can do is every few seconds, so we're actually going to want to do a coroutine here. Uh, so coroutines let you uh, work with, with timing. So private enumerator. Um, and this isn't the best way to do this, I would think, but um, we're just going to... Uh, Recursively call this this function here. So first thing we're going to do is yield return and return null. Oops. At the end of this, and then uh, what we want to do is uh, wait for seconds, and we'll say three twenty-three three. Um, oh, right, hang on. 
use our coroutine. Wait for seconds. Three. Um, oh, hang on. This, yeah, this might not be the correct syntax here. What is this saying? It's saying... Um, wait for a second. The real time. Is that what they're calling it now? seconds real time I swear I thought that this was hmm okay hang on well first thing that we want to do is uh, spawn enemy what this is gonna do is I'm gonna call this at the start um, and uh, what this is gonna do is every few seconds it's gonna spawn the enemy it's gonna wait and then it's gonna spawn another enemy it's going to keep doing that over and over and over again um return maybe new wait for oh that's what it was yeah you wait for seconds three um and then go on then thank you spawn the enemy right okay cool so now we just have to spawn the enemy so let's do that so uh game object enemy so e equals instantiate and then uh, enemy with the transform not being that and then what else can we do there was a vector three position so the position is going to be some position we're going to make a vector three uh, spawn position and we'll want to make that serialized so we can see it. We're also going to want to make this serialized. I wish attributes could affect multiple objects, but I guess that's not the case here. Maybe in a future update, who knows? Uh, okay, so right, so we want to spawn it at the position, spawn position, and uh, no, that doesn't need rotation, so quaternion. Dot identity. I think that should be fine. Um, then we just have to figure out the position, and then it's going to wait three seconds, and it's going to spawn the enemy again. And then what we're going to do is um, we want to. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, and then we have to pass in a string for. Hmm. Ah, right. It's not going to work is we have to do this inside of that coroutine then. What I wanted to do was each time we spawn a new enemy we give it a random um, word. So in order to do that we don't want this random number to be the same for every enemy spawn. We want it to be different. So every time we call this function uh, or method whatever you want to call it uh, we're going to call this and we're going to create a new random number. Um, radio. Okay. <clears throat> Got some mint and some pomegranate juice, a bit of ice. Can't go wrong. So we have this random number, and then we, when we create this, <clears throat> excuse me, this enemy, uh, we're going to get the enemy component here, and we're going to set the word to words at index random, or rather, this words uh, array at index random. So once we spawn this, uh, we are going to e dot set. Oops, E dot get component because it's just a game object at the moment so we have to access its enemy component and then say set word to words random so every time we create an enemy we're gonna set the word to a random string in this list here and we can always extend it we can eventually make a JSON and then load that into the, the, uh, the file or through the script for the time being I think this should be fine um, right, and then wait and spawn, so let's see if this works, uh, we just have to call start coroutine, spawn enemy, oh, okay, cool. So let's try it out. So we gotta add a few 
uh, things in here. So we got to add the enemy prefab. Let's do that through here. Just so we have that spawn position. What's, what are we going to make this? Um, let's see. The enemy is moving, right? Okay, cool. And in that case, we don't really need the word to loop anymore. So we can remove that bit. We have to set the enemy's speed. So let's set the speed to three. Actually, we want to do that in the prefab. So it applies to every enemy. Whew, excuse me. Okay. Game manager is going to spawn the enemy. We'll spawn the enemy at, uh, I don't know, um, maybe here. How's that? Is that in the game? I can't tell. We're gonna have to double check, but I don't think it is. Um, so what's that? It's 28 and 1. Point, let's say 5. 1.5. Nope. 1.4. It is. Definitely want that bit of depth here. So 1.4 and then 28. Let's say. Okay. So 28, and that's gonna be the position. So okay, let's do 28, 1.4, and I also want to check the Z just to be sure it's okay. It is zero. Cool. Uh, oh, and when we spawn it, we probably want to set its um sorry, its sorting layer to the midground. So let's do let's do that actually. When we when it's spawned, I want to set um I'm actually going to do this in Void. I don't know if you can do this in Awake, or if you have to do it in Start, but Awake comes before Start. There's a whole ordering of, of different mono behavior functions uh, that occur in a certain sequence. I think you can change them. I'm forgetting what that setting is. It's in here somewhere. But in any case, we're, we're just worried about Awake for right now. There's an update and fixed update, right, which we saw before with the physics. Uh, okay, so Awake and then what we want to do is get the sprite renderer component. Yeah. Sprite renderer. Then get the sorting layer name. And we'll set that equal to midground. We'll set it equal to midground. And I'm just using this layers uh, enum because I have it. And it's just better than using raw strings, because uh, I know I have it right in that layers uh, script that I have. Sprites, let's go to scripts. And here, you can just see we have background, midground, and foreground. And we know that these are spelled correctly, so we don't have to write it out more than once. Uh, so we can just use this as a, a reference, which is nice. So we're setting the sorting layer to midground, just in case. Never know what happens. And this is going to move. Um, okay. So we're going to just disable this guy for the time being. And I want to see if it'll spawn and if it'll move, more importantly. Okay. So that's... Oh, hang on. The word is still moving. Oh, maybe we didn't update that in the prefab. So let's do that. Open the prefab, let's go to Word. Ah, that's right. Okay, let's remove this. And we're gonna save that, and then we should go back. And now the enemy should be moving. Well, eventually the word and the enemy will move together. Hopefully that'll happen right now. Wait, okay, cool. Now, uh, okay, we're gonna have to set the position of it a bit better. Let's access that <clears throat> in the start mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me Boy. all these frogs in my throat so we want to add to our enemy script so we're gonna create a field and word position and then we'll say transform dots get child we'll say maybe find child ok 
Okay, what is what is this? Deprecated apparently gift child. Let's do get child. Zero nope, we can't just do that. Get child. Spur, it's gonna give us the transform. Dots local position. We know the word is always going to be a um child of the enemy. So we know that we're always going to get some child. Uh, and we want the position of the word. Let's actually enable the enemy so we can play around with this. So the position of the word right now is like local in uh, in the transform here. So it's local to the enemy's position. And that always happens whenever you have a child and a parent together with a child. Uh, well, this the transform here always shows the local position and not the global position. Uh, there is a way to... Uh, well, obviously you can just take the word out, uh, but then you might break the prefab. Um, but you you could do that in uh, if you open up the prefab, and then you well. Uh, let's see now. Oh, I guess not. You cannot do that. Interesting. So you can't break the prefab when you open it up. Well, in any case, we don't have to do that. But eventually, if you wanted to, you could check what the global position is versus the local, the loco. Um, yeah, so I think that should be fine. Maybe we'll set it to a random position between, I don't know, negative 1.8 and, oh, what is that? Yeah, negative 1.8 and 1.8, sure. And then a Y of like 4.2. Okay, let's try that. So this word position. Actually, we want to set word position dot x equals random dot random random dot range, and we'll set it to negative one point eight and one point eight. These have to be it floats apparently, so we got to end it with an f. Um, position equals word position right okay let's try that out so now we have to set the enemy's uh, word position doesn't really matter what the X is um, this is probably not the best way to get this done mm. maybe we don't even need to serialize it maybe we can just say um, maybe we can just say word position equals vector three range four point two zero. Might as well end it in an F. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, you know what? Yeah, it's it's better in case we have to make room for other things that are going to be a part of the enemy. So let's just leave this as serialized and let's just set the X as a random for now. And if we feel that we can clean it up, make it a bit nicer, then we can totally do that. Okay. So we still have to set the Y. So let's set the Y local position to 4.2. This is the X to keep the X at zero. Why not? Uh, actually, I probably want to do that in the prefab. So let's set Y. 4.2. Cool. That should save. Um, right. So we have that one. Wow. We I. Oh my goodness gracious. So what's happening here? Let's see. So the enemy at the moment has two words. No, has one word. The word is miracle, but for some reason, it's got five of these things. Holy moly. Um, oh, I see. So we have two enemies on top of each other. Mm hmm. So we have a clone, and then we have the regular enemy. Ah, right, right. So we have to disable this guy. That's what it was, because they're spawning immediately on top of each other. Is that what we want? I mean, that, that should be fine, yeah. Um... And we're just leaving him in so that we can mess around with some settings here and there. OK. 
interface we have test. All right, now what happens when we finish the word? Well, okay, first of all, the enemy should be destroyed, and then we have a new one eventually pop up, hopefully, please, yes, maybe, no, no, maybe not, okay. Um, we are not seeing an enemy just yet, which is interesting. So, okay, let's see what happened. So, we, cre we did create an enemy, right? And, oh! Start coroutine. Uh, that's how they get you. That's the thing about I. It's not the best sometimes to, to use it, but in this case, if we're just. If we want something to happen every few seconds, it's easier on our part. Okay, so we have cool. So we have that one, this one. Right now, there are no colliders on these guys, so we can just walk right over them. And that's going to be a problem. What on earth? So that's fun, I guess. And then it's going to be frog, and then fun again. And then miracle. Cool. Okay, so we, we see that it's working. We see it develop. Now, obviously, we have this list lettering issue, so we're going to want to uh, adjust that just a tad. And maybe we want to set the layer to foreground instead. Let's see. Now let's set let's set the layer to foreground. Let's have that be saved. And I wonder if because we're making the enemy sorting layer midground, that it'll also make the child midground. I'm not sure. Let's double check that. So we run this and we have an enemy pop up on our screen. Lovely. I'm just gonna pause this for a second. <clears throat> This one, now let's look at the word. So this guy is on mid-ground, this guy is on foreground. Okay. I just want to see how the letters interact with the... Uh... Yeah, and that's that's the other issue that we might run into. Uh, that's why we might have to use the arrow keys here instead of A, W, A, S, and D. Um, which is totally fine, but just wanted to use A, S, W, D for testing purposes. Okay, so that's kind of working. And the letters are now showing up on top of the, the platform, which is good news. Uh, okay, cool, so that's no longer a problem. Uh, what was it? So yeah, so let's let's update the player movement a bit. So instead of checking for key code A, we'll do, uh, not up arrow, left arrow. Left Windows, that's the one. Left Arrow, pretty please, thank you. What is Left Apple? I don't even know what Left Apple is. Right Alt, Right Apple. Oh, for uh, Max, interesting. Okay. Mm, nope, also wrong. Hang on. <laughs> left Arrow, that's the one. And Right Arrow. Okay. Space is fine. Um. Oh, that's right, we're not using W and S. Okay, yeah, so left and right then. We have all the double jump stuff. I'm going to want to clean this up, actually, but we'll do that another time. I want to continue with the enemy behavior. Okay, so now uh, the positions are all being randomized. Uh, what's happening in our console? I saw a few errors. Let's see. There's a component. There's a particle system attached to Word. The script is trying to access it. I would disagree with that wholeheartedly um ah oh, oh, oh. hang on do we have to mm, no there should be something attached here hang on um maybe i didn't attach it correctly oh hang on what happened to our particle effect that stinks Hmm. Maybe we, we overrode the uh, the particle effects for some reason. I don't know how that would have happened. Um. All right. Well, we're gonna have to we'll have to do that again then. Wow, that stinks. Um. I'll see if I can go back and find that particle system that I did that one episode uh, and then I can just add that back in but if you guys don't remember if this also happens to you you can also go back to the other videos and just take a gander not too much of a problem that's the one uh, good thing about recording all these sessions um, and just about unity in general 
is that we have uh, version control, which is immensely helpful. To the moon and back, it's it's a lifesaver. Okay, so what did what did we want to do? Uh, we were going to work on the and we're gonna add some more stuff to the enemy. Okay, so uh, what happens when what's going on? Different tangents here. What happens when we complete a word? When we actually complete a word, not much happens. The color changes, but what I actually want is uh, for the the sprite to change on the enemy for something to happen, right? Some some feedback and then i don't know it'll it'll change the the sprite to something else who knows let's take a look actually let's take a look at the enemies and see what we have in terms of maybe um this thing here okay so i see i see Huh. That might take a bit more work than I thought, actually. Um, why don't we just have it fade out? And... Yeah, why don't we just have it fade out? Um, oh, those are getting really big. New enemy. What are these? Oh, we have the chain, the ball and chain. Yeah, cool. Okay, so yeah, so when we finish the word, when the word is completed, uh, and we have something here, finished word. So if we finish the word, then we return. We don't necessarily just want to do that anymore. Um, <laughs> so let's see, we'll make this, we'll make a, um, a getter for it. And this is just typical C-sharp and, and Unity programming. Um, get and oh, oops. Finish word, okay. Uh, this is just um, a way, actually I think you could even get away with this, but I want to be explicit. Mm. Yeah, this is a shortcut that allows um, any Unity developer to, instead of just making their, um, uh, their, their property public, right, for everybody to see, what you can do is uh, you can make it so that we can uh, access this value, but we can't change it from any other class other than this one, which is kind of what I want. Uh, it's what you want for most variables. Uh, you want the class to be responsible for its own behaviors and, and properties. That's just object-oriented programming. So we have this finished word getter, is what it's called. And now we can use that and check in the enemy if the text behavior of the child, if the finished word is true, because we're never setting it to false. I don't think. Let me check. Let's see. Find all references. <laughs> Get finished word, finished word. Sure, right. Whenever setting it to false. Okay, cool. This is also super helpful. It doesn't just give you all the references in this text or in this script, but it gives you references in every single script. So I don't know if you guys can see this down here. You probably couldn't actually. So down in the bottom, where my face is probably covering everything, I'll just show this to you guys. So what I did was I, I uh, double clicked on either a variable or a method name or even a class and I right clicked it and I went to find all references and I think this is a Visual Studio thing but if you right click it it'll show you where you're using that variable name or that method name uh, anywhere in your code base right in any of the classes uh, which is super helpful so in this case I'm only using it in text behavior but you see I have one two three four five six instances of this variable popping up so it's just super helpful if you need to know where you're using a certain variable somewhere. And now back to my face covering the important stuff. So, after that tangent, why did I do all this in the first place? Um, so we made this, this getter, finished word, so that we can check in update if 
get component in children text behavior dot finish word if the child of this object has finished its word then what do we want to do we want to start fading okay so let's make a let's just make boolean fading All right, it's going to default to false um, fading equals true. Ooh, excuse me. Okay, and then if fading, and we're only going to want it to fade out. We're not going to want it to fade back in ever. At least not yet. I don't know. I'm not thinking that far ahead in the game. No quote. No pun intended. So if we're fading, then we want to slowly reduce the alpha of the color of this sprite renderer. So let's get component sprite renderer. Dot. You know what? Actually, I'm just going to access it so we don't have to keep calling get components. Um, in update, I just want to set it equal to get component sprite renderer. And we'll do a little uh, require components spriter sprite render. Um, okay, maybe I didn't do that right. Oh, maybe it's instead of that, it's this. Maybe you have to put it in quotes because I know that you're able to do this. Well, let's, mm, I don't know. Um, what is the problem here? Well, let's see, maybe we'll get an error in the console. Okay, script, oh, you need a, you're kidding me. Hang on. No, 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 you don't. No way do you need that. Um, Error. Oh, this is on line 34. It's saying. Oh, right. Okay. Fine. 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 Yes. 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 Get the sprite renderer. I'm all over the place when I'm developing. We all know this at this point. Uh, so we're gonna get the the color equals uh, new color. Oops. Um, I'm actually gonna do S P R R. dot r color dot g dot b spr dot color dot a minus zero point one or something. Um, because I think the alpha might go from zero to one instead of zero to two fifty five. I think that might be the case for all these numbers. I'm not entirely sure actually, I'm forgetting um, what the range was for the color uh, component, or the, the, the color class. Well, in any case, now that we've saved that, we fixed that, is it going to give us another issue here? Sprite renders a type is not valid in a given context. Um, do we put it in quotes maybe? Nope. Fire components, I know, I know that this is, you're able to do this. Um, well, I'll look up how to do that later on. Uh, what it does is it doesn't let you, it, it makes you add this uh, component to the object before you can use it, before you can spawn it. Okay, so if we're fading, then do that. And then if uh, color dot alpha is less than or equal to zero, Destroy new object. Okay. Put this under. Hmm. 
Yeah, actually, let's let's do if not fading. We'll do an else. Or actually, it would make more sense. Yeah, it would it would make more sense if we did that, just for legibility. If fading, then do that, right? Otherwise, if we finish the word, set it to true, and then we're going to go to this if statement. So thankfully, uh, with the, the if and else structure, this will only run at most once. Um, once once this gets set to true, anyway. Um, because we don't want this. This is always going to be true. Uh, unless we set it, set finish word to false, but I would always want this to ring true once we finished it. So, <clears throat> excuse me, once we finish the word, then this else is going to stop running. And this if is going to run until it destroys the game object. Let's try this out. Um, okay. And we're already running out of time here, hey? Eh? Okay. Okay, and then we have, let's see, develop. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah. And maybe we can add a particle effect particle system to these guys to have them uh, destroy. Look like they're getting destroyed instead of just fading out. But I'm just doing fading for the time being just to make sure it works. And we can always add in little uh, bells and whistles uh, later on, adding small feedback. And we're also going to add sounds at some point. Um, I'm going to work on animations as well. So, okay. So that's working out, which is cool. Uh, I'm wondering, because the word I don't think fades out either when we do this. So now I'm going to need two hands because I changed it. Oh, maybe it does. Hang on. Well, I guess it doesn't matter because it's, it's changing the color. Yeah, okay, cool. Um... And I'm probably going to want to add a little feedback, like every time you get a letter, there's a little like shift in, in color in the, in the letter, so it kind of brightens a bit, and there's a little like shock value, so whenever you hit a letter, there's real impact every time. Uh, but again, these are smaller things that we'll add later on. A lot of feedback is better than little feedback, um, visual or audio, just in design in general. Uh, you can always take stuff away, but to, to be able to add stuff is is the, the more difficult part I think um, okay so this is coming along quite nicely what else can we do here we have a few minutes left maybe uh, we can let's test it out let's see if maybe we want to add a gizmo to the radius or something yeah, let's let's try that. Um, hmm. no, I don't know if we might not have enough time for that. Uh, let's let's add that particle system back to our word uh, prefab. Okay. So I want to remove this, please. Word. Cool. Thank you. And system. Okay, and here, what do I want to do? Um, right. Nope. Okay. Oh, hang on. So this does have the... So wait, hang on, hang on. Am I crazy? Wait, don't answer that. I more than likely already know the answer. But... Oh. So... This has always been here. Am I? Ooh, I might be crazy. Ooh, uh-oh. Might be losing it, guys. I swear I... Oh, because it's the symbol. Can I go to the word? Is this... Play? Oh, yeah. No, I'm not crazy. That's, that's definitely not what we had before. Um... Yeah, so we, we changed this a bit. We changed the, the, the shape and things. We had, what was this? This is a cone. 
Um, honestly, that should be fine. We had a burst, I think, as well. Maybe we got rid of the burst, but we wanted like something like 0 0.3 start speed was at five start size is at 0.2. Um, overload. Boy, wow, we just got, we just got got. Hang on, gotta go back into Unity Hub. That happens every once in a while. Um, I'd like to know why that happened. Um, maybe it's because I had two particle systems attached to... Well, no, because this enemy... This word already had this particle system, right? Hmm... Yeah, no, I'm, I'm uh, a bit confused myself, actually, right over time. Uh, if we just play this now, if we just run this, just play the particle effect, what do we have? Stop. All right, and then just have like duration of one. We don't want it to be looping. Hmm. Well, we did something. That was pretty weird. Hmm. All right, let's just So, wow. I don't know where that came from actually. I'll have to look that up. I'm sure they have a lot of docs. I'm sure somebody went on the same thing that we did. Uh, okay. So, we didn't do anything with the rotation or anything. We didn't do much with the color, I don't think. We were messing around with it at first, and then we added the coin, and there's not much point to, to changing the color of that. Because uh, it's already gold? Let's see, we had a velocity over time, I think. Uh, okay. We made it. Try to make an orbital, I think. Uh, and maybe start speed. Maybe we wanted it to be a curve. We wanted it to go from... 5 down to negative 5. Okay, let's try that. Um, oh, I see. Right, right. So, now we actually want the velocity over time to go from 5 to negative 5. Velocity over lifetime. And we'll do local, sure. Orbital. And I actually would like a curve here. So for x, we go from, hmm, particles to face the camera, align to world axis, or stay local to the system's transform. Interesting. Um, how large is a particle allowed to be on screen at most one? This entire viewport. 0.5 is half the viewport. Interesting. Okay, how about this one? The largest particle that's being screened at most. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay. Let's try radial. Let's make this a curve. Let's make it go from zero to... This is velocity over lifetime. I would like it to go from... 1 to negative 1. Let's try that out. Let's just play it. Cool. Didn't really do much, did it? Alright. Let's try to move this back to constant. Speed modifier. So maybe it's not velocity over lifetime. But what I'd like to do is for it to go out and then go back in. So maybe start speed. Should be at like 7. And start size is fine and then yeah what I'd like is for it to to go out of the emission uh, source and then come back in after a certain amount of time emit from base right um randomizer randomizer position so well I guess we can we can play around with this next time. Um, 
for the time being, I think we made a good amount of progress. I am upset that we lost that particle system, but I guess it gives us an opportunity to try and make another one. Um, so, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. I know this was uh, not as, as talkative a session as some of them usually are. Uh, hopefully I can I can change that once we really start getting into it. We can start thinking of ideas and we can throw stuff out there. You guys can join me in the chat or throw a, a comment in here or there. Um, so that's going to be it for today. Again, happy Father's Day to all those who might be joining in a bit late. Um, and happy Monday. Like and subscribe to the DAE channel and to all of our other content. We have a lot of great uh, videos coming out uh, every week. So be sure to check those out. Uh, and that'll be it for me. So signing off for now, uh, I will see you guys next week.